M2 iPad Pro versus M2 MacBook Air. How do you choose? Well, today we are gonna compare everything from the design, the ports, the displays, the speakers, the cameras, and much more to help you make the right choice. Now, personally, I'm really curious about the performance of the M2 chip in an iPad. And as you guys can see here, I have it on the Magic Keyboard. But the beauty of the iPad is that you could take it off and you have such a small and thin device that is really powerful compared to the M2 MacBook Air, which is also really nice and small and lightweight, but it still does not compare to the dimensions and the weight of this iPad. The 12.9 inch iPad is literally the same dimensions as this lid, but shorter. And then you guys saw that thickness there. It is thinner than even the bottom portion of the MacBook. Of course, it has those feet that raise it off. But with that, if you go ahead and add the keyboard case to make it a MacBook replacement, well, obviously, look at that. It gets even thicker than the MacBook and it is actually heavier as well. That is one chunky keyboard. And not only that, it is more expensive as well because this is a $350 keyboard. The iPad by itself is at least $1,100. And if you match up the storage, you're looking at $1,550 compared to 1200. And if you wanna make use of the Apple Pencil, well now you're up to almost $1,700. So let's see if it's worth spending that extra money. Now, as far as ports, the M2 MacBook Air has two Thunderbolt ports, whereas the iPad has one. The MacBook also has a MagSafe charging port which is really nice. But if you buy the Magic Keyboard for the iPad, you do get an additional USB Type-C port for charging. Now, unfortunately, that port doesn't charge as fast as plugging into the iPad itself, whereas the MacBook, it can actually charge to 50% in less than 30 minutes compared to an hour and a half, and the MacBook can charge fully in an hour and a half compared to three hours for the iPad, even though it has a larger battery. And we're gonna talk about battery life in just a bit. Now, on the back of the iPad, you guys see that camera system, which the MacBook doesn't have. And not only do we have a standard camera, we have an ultra wide camera, and we have a LiDAR sensor for those that wanna do scanning, for augmented reality, all of that stuff. And that definitely adds to the cost. But for some people, being able to have a camera in the iPad built in can be very useful. Now we also have some major differences with the front cameras, but before we compare that, if you're a Mac user who does any sort of work with documents, spreadsheets, or slideshows on your Mac, our sponsor Software Keep is giving our viewers 20% off genuine Microsoft software, like a one-time purchase of Microsoft Office for Mac, which includes Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now, there are so many fishy websites out there that could scam you, but Software Keep is a Microsoft certified partner who only sells 100% genuine Microsoft software, so you don't have to worry, which resulted in Software Keep earning over 100,000 five-star reviews. They also have great prices on other software, including the most popular antivirus software out there, and their customer service is phenomenal, with 24-7, 365 customer support, where you will talk to a real person instead of a robot. So if you have any questions, they'll be glad to help. So buy Microsoft Office for Mac or anything else you need today and save 20% off their already great prices by using the link in the description and the coupon code MAXTECH20. Now, as far as the front cameras, the MacBook has a normal setup built in, whereas the iPad, it still has the camera off to the side. So when you're on your keyboard, I'm looking straight at the display right now, right in the center, and it looks like I'm not paying attention to whoever I'm talking to. So uh, that is definitely a downside. And as far as the microphones, you guys just go ahead and let me know which one sounds better, the MacBook or is it the iPad? Now with that front facing camera, we also have Face ID. So right there, you guys saw it instantly unlock me. I'm gonna tap again to get into uh, iPad OS and it's so quick and convenient. And with that, it could also log you into different apps uh, to fill in your data. Whereas with the MacBook, even though we have that notch, we do not have Face ID, so it's just Touch ID, which isn't too bad, but not as convenient. Now, before I cover displays, I wanna talk about the keyboards and the trackpads. The Magic Keyboard is really nice. The keys feel better than any other tablet keyboard. The trackpad also works really well, but it is not as nice as an actual MacBook. And I think what a lot of people don't talk about is when you have the iPad on your lap, 
It is not that balanced because the iPad is really heavy, so the whole thing is top heavy and it bounces around compared to the MacBook, which is bottom heavy, so it is nice and stable. So overall, if you're using it on your lap, the MacBook experience is definitely better. And with that, the Magic Keyboard does not have a function row. So if you want to do things like adjust your brightness, skip songs, you're switching to the display to do those kind of things. Whereas the MacBook, we have that full function row key. It's very convenient. Now, hopefully in the future, Apple will update this keyboard like their new Folio, which does have that. But for now, we are stuck with this. On the plus side, we also have the Apple Pencil for the iPad, which you can't get on a Mac. It attaches and charges and pairs automatically at the top there and you can do things like writing quick notes. You can draw with it, but as you guys see, uh, even my handwriting sucks, so I don't really use it for that. But for some people, the Apple Pencil and the ability to have a touch screen is worth it alone to go for an iPad. Getting into displays, the actual detail and sharpness isn't much different, but the iPad has 120 Hertz ProMotion, so everything is super smooth, as you guys could see in the slow motion shot. Now we also have a big difference in brightness and manually upping both of these to the maximum, you can see that the iPad is a little bit brighter. It's 600 nits compared to 500. The viewing angles of the iPad is also a lot better than the MacBook. But when you're watching HDR content, the iPad looks much better because it's using a mini LED display so it can reach up to 1600 nits compared to just 500, so video really pops. And if you're watching in a darker environment, the difference is absolutely massive because you have almost pure black levels like an OLED compared to the LCD in the MacBook, which has gray everywhere. So the movie watching experience is much better with the iPad. Now with mini LED, you can get blooming sometimes if it's turned up max on brightness and it's pure white on black, but the MacBook has blooming everywhere because the LCD is making everything bright. So when I'm at home or I go somewhere and I wanna watch a movie, I'm planning for that, I definitely wanna take the iPad. Now with that, we also have a difference in speakers. The iPad has quad speakers as woofers and tweeters all around compared to speakers that are built in and hidden inside of the case itself with no speaker holes. So with that, let's go ahead and compare the speaker quality and let's take a listen. Now Apple advertised the MacBook speaker system that it has woofers and tweeters built in, but the iPad sounds so much better in the mids. You have way more bass. It's louder, better clarity. And not only that, but when you're watching, one thing you guys can't hear online is the separation. If you're watching a movie, the speakers are on the sides, so the whole sound is surrounding you. It just it is such a great experience watching something or listening compared to the MacBook where a lot of the sound is coming from right here in the center where the speakers are packed. So as far as audio, it is way better on the iPad. And now let's get into performance, starting out with our disk speed test. I'm gonna run Blackmagic's here and Jazz speed test here. Now the base MacBook Air only comes with a single NAND chip, which makes the storage slower. And we have a write speed difference of 1421 compared to 953. Now this is the 128 gigabyte version of the iPad Pro, but the 256 gig version is 2,123. Four, that's getting near twice as fast as the MacBook. In terms of the read speeds, we have 1443 compared to 1570. So even the 128 gig is faster, but the 256 comes in at 3240, much, much faster. Now the internal speed is just one aspect. What about real world transfers? Both of these do have Thunderbolt ports, so you would think they would be the same, but I tested out transferring a 24.6 gig file and it took 36 seconds on the iPad compared to just 16 seconds 
on the MacBook. Now, if you think that's just because of the slow write speed of the 128 gig, well, you would be wrong because even the 256 gig model took about the same time, 37 seconds. And that is because for some reason, the Thunderbolt port in the iPad is nowhere near as fast for data transfers compared to even a base MacBook. We had this issue with the M1 iPad Pro and I was hoping it'd be fixed, but nope, the M2 still does the same thing. Now, as far as web performance, I'm gonna run speedometer 2.0 right here and it tests loading JavaScript, web-based apps, things like that. And as you guys can see, both of these are incredibly fast, faster than anything else. Uh, the iPad won by a little bit, doesn't really matter, but in terms of how it feels, because of the ProMotion, it does feel a little bit snappier. Now, in terms of the M2 chip performance, I'm gonna go ahead and run Geekbench right here to see the performance. Some people were worried about the M2 chip being slowed down in a, such a thin tablet, and both of these do have eight gigs of RAM. Now, the MacBook, you can actually get up to 24 gigabytes, but more importantly, you could stay with the lower amount of storage and still bump up to 16. Whereas with the iPad, you have to buy at least a terabyte to get 16 gigs and you're paying extra for the 16. So Apple locks it down or in turn forces you to get 16 gigs when you might not want it or need it with iPad OS if you want a terabyte. We have our performance result and the MacBook beat out the iPad by a little bit in terms of single core and multi-core performance, but it is very minor. Now, as far as graphics performance, I'm gonna run our metal compute test, which tests a lot of different things. And looking at the results, the iPad is actually faster with its M2 chip. And that is because Apple does not bin the 10 core graphics for the iPad. Whereas with the MacBook, you have to pay extra to get that, or it just comes with an eight graphics core M2 chip, which is about 25% slower. Now, in terms of gaming performance, I'm gonna run 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Test in the unlimited mode. And looking at the results, the iPad, even though you might think it just will throttle down in such a thin body, it's still about 22% faster in terms of frame rates. Now, I ran this multiple times here, and after you've been gaming for about 15 to 20 minutes, the iPad will slow down almost to the performance of the MacBook after it made multiple runs. So the MacBook actually throttles faster almost right away, whereas the iPad gives you a little bit more oomph and then that goes away. So they didn't really need to give it that extra graphics, at least for longer kind of renders. Now I don't just wanna run those benchmarks, I wanna run something real world, and a lot of people love doing photo editing on the iPad, it's great with the Apple Pencil, you have a lot of control, but I'm curious about the performance. Here I have 50, 42 megapixel raw files, I have edits on all of the images here, and snappiness, they are both great. So I'm gonna go ahead and export these. I'm gonna start my timer right here, here, and I'm using Lightroom Mobile on both of these. So same software, same chip. We just have iPad OS versus Mac OS. Now the MacBook hit 108 degrees Celsius almost right away, and now it is throttling down to 103, 104, but it is still exporting faster than the iPad. Bam, we are done here. Actually, I have to save first. And without counting that saving, the iPad took two minutes and 58 seconds compared to two minutes flat on the MacBook. So the MacBook is 50% faster even though everything else is the same. And I noticed that across a few different apps testing macOS compared to iPad previously where macOS is just faster. And that brings me to the whole operating system. With macOS, you can run a lot of iPad apps, but you have full access to say the full version like Lightroom Classic, which is even faster than this mobile version. With iPadOS, we have the full app store that has a ton of apps that are there. You have great media apps. You have good apps for productivity. We have Procreate there. There's just an insane library of different things you could do. Uh, for example, you have some video editing applications and they are all very inexpensive compared to a lot of Mac apps, which you'll spend a lot more money on, but it's worth it. For example, Final Cut, you get the full version, DaVinci Resolve as well. Now that's gonna come to the iPad soon, but it is a minor cut down version still, not the full thing. So as far as applications, it's hit or miss. You have more stuff for the 
iPad, but more powerful things for Mac OS. And then with that multitasking, we still don't have full multitasking for the iPad. Now, Apple did add Stage Manager where you can bring apps together. Uh, you have a lot more control and scalability. We have that sidebar. You can stretch stuff in and then you can pull out that sidebar and have different pairs of apps. So it is a nice update, but you don't have full control like you do with the Mac, where you can have Windows however you want. You are not limited. So overall, I just wish the Apple would add Mac OS to the iPad instead of limiting it us with, you know, this regular view that I had before or stage manager. It would just open up so much possibilities. It would make this truly a pro device. With that, the Files app still has issues. There's still no way to eject a hard drive. So in the previous test, when I was testing out uh, the transfer speeds, even though I was so careful, it still corrupted my SSD. I had to use a Mac to repair it. And people have been complaining about this kind of stuff for such a long time. But if Apple added Mac OS here, well, you wouldn't have to buy an, a Mac and an iPad. You could just buy an iPad. You can see how powerful it is. But at this point, iPadOS is still limiting. And now let's talk about the battery life. The MacBook has a battery that's about 27% larger than the iPad. And with that, the iPad screen gets much brighter and it also supports ProMotion. Now, Apple's battery life figures are very vague, but if you're doing very light tasks with the iPad, you can get up to 10 hours compared to about 15 on the MacBook. But if you're pushing both machines, for example, photo editing, and you're raising up that brightness, People have said they get as low as four hours for the iPad compared to eight hours for the MacBook because the screen doesn't draw anywhere near as much power. So the battery life difference can be pretty massive. And with that, the MacBook charges twice as fast as the iPad if you're using a faster charger for both devices. So it's definitely a big win for the MacBook in terms of battery life. So with all of that said, should you buy one of these M2 iPads or just get an M2 MacBook Air? Well, it is still a very tough choice. And if you know that you want the Apple Pencil, you want the rear cameras, you want to be able to hold it in your hand like this, it's obvious you get the iPad. But if you're mostly using your machine like you would a laptop and you want the iPad to be a laptop replacement, well, I personally prefer to have a MacBook most of the time. Even though the display is not as good, the speakers aren't as good, it's just very convenient. The form factor, the weight balance, it's not wobbling. It's a lot less expensive and you have full Mac OS, which is a huge selling point. So for me, as long as I'm not watching a bunch of media and music and movies, I'd rather have the MacBook and save some money. But if you want the app library from the App Store and some of those other things, the iPad is a good choice. You'll just be limited to when you want to use it as a MacBook replacement. If only Apple would fix the software, but of course they don't want to. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Click that circle above to subscribe to see more videos like this one and check out one of those great videos right over there, the Spinax, and I'll see you in the next one.